A very good evening to all the educators who are joining us on the live session for International Boot Camp on Coding, Artificial Intelligence and Robotics, especially for the school educators. So we are here with one more wonderful session for all of you in day number five, where we are going to talk about the gesture controlled robots. I hope you are all ready to make your robot move with the gestures. We will be shortly starting our session just in few more minutes. Till the time you can let us know on the chat from where you have joined us and the name of the country. And I would also like to call up my colleague, Tina. Hello, Tina. Hi, Ayush. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Pleasure to welcome all of you to International Bootcamp Program Level with the knowledge of artificial intelligence and robotics after the completion of this bootcamp program. On behalf of Enter's Tempedia family, I welcome you once again to this International Bootcamp Program Level 2. I request all the educators to share your name along with your country name in our chat. Thanks, Christina. We can see, uh, of course, Christina has joined us from Croatia. And I would like to share that now we have, of course, being a part of one family. And now it feels very familiar with all the educators seeing their activities in the Telegram, getting their issues resolved, and next day again coming back and talking to them on the live session. So it's an amazing uh, interactive process to make it a little more amazing. We want all of you to please join our Telegram group. So you can scan this QR code and of course, join our Telegram group where we would be helping you with the your issues, supporting you with the uh, problem you are facing. Apart from it, this would be one of the medium for our communications towards you for the complete bootcamp as well as uh, the further developments which are going to come up with the STEMpedia as well as the new boot camps aligned for you. So I hope you have already joined in to the Telegram. Still, if not, you can of course join us. Moving ahead with a part of how exactly we came up with this wonderful boot camp. So we would like to thank our all collaborators who have helped us to reach to the maximum educators around the world. Stempedia has of course hosted the boot camp. Art Park has, is the co-host, which is our AI and robotics technology park from Bangalore. Also, the complete bootcamp has been supported by Niti Ayog, that is Atal Innovation Mission, which is a integral part of the central government education system in India. To take you further, I would request Tina. Tina, can you hear me? Sure, Ayush. Yeah. So it's our pleasure to have all India Educators Forum and American Indian Foundation to be as our community partner. They help us to reach our maximum. We have many international partners like Purpose Smart Education Palestine, National Institute of Education Singapore, Apex Coding Academy Egypt, ITA Tunisia, and EduStream UAE. All our collaborators and STEMpedia had made had made a wonderful effort to bring all our educators to this platform. Now, it's time to discuss about basic objective behind this uh, international bootcamp program. The objective of this bootcamp program is to empower the educator, educators by deepening their knowledge and understanding on coding, artificial intelligence, robotics, and thus enhancing them with all the necessary skills that they required on this 21st uh, century. 
This international bootcamp program will definitely give a hands-on experience to our educators on this latest technologies like robotics, artificial intelligence, machine learning in a fun and very interactive manner. By learning more about these new day technologies like artificial intelligence, robotics, coding, our educator will become more confident to talk about these technologies in front of a society. Last but not the least, we are making our teachers to become an ambassador of their own institution. Now, now why you need to participate in this bootcamp program? We are giving you an opportunity to learn with our international educator so that with this, through this program, you can join in our international educators community also. You can share your uh, doubts, you can discuss among yourselves and all. As I mentioned be before, you can acquire the skills that they, you require on this 21st century uh, centuries. And one important thing I want to add here is that we will be giving you all the teacher resources and we will are giving you the your students our learning resources also by this by the completion of this uh, bootcamp program you will be earning a badge and a certificate aggregated by art park and stem art park stempedia and stem.org i think uh, uh ayush it's time for you to take it forward now. thank you yeah sure tina so now I think we are on the part of the schedule. So just a sec. So now we are going to tell you about an overview of the schedule. Actually, we have covered so many things during the boot camps in the level one and the level two. Right now, let's see what exactly the things we have covered in the last days and what we are going to cover it today. The first day, of course, it was an amazing to start with the introduction of robotics, where we talked about the basics of robotics, making our robot move in forward and the backward directions. The next day, of course, on the 28th June, we started with self-driving robot, which is one of the very interesting activities where our educators came up with amazing projects, making their robots move by showcasing the different card recognition cards in front of the camera. The next day, of course, one of a very important topic of the robotics that is line following robot, which helped us to make our quarky move in a line so that, of course, it can be utilized for making big and amazing projects. The next day, we came up with a, a chapter, or I should say, we came up with a session on AI delivery robot where we used our old learning of recognition cards as well as we used our previous learning of line following and came up with an amazing concept where we were able to stop our quarky in different locations with just showcasing the numbers here the numbers were working as a house number so we made a quarky delivering the robots in different house numbers like house number one house number two and house number three and today we are here again coming up with a wonderful session on gesture control robot, where we would be using some hand detection techniques and machine learning concepts to make our robot move in the different directions. We have a coming amazing session and an important session on 3rd July, where we would be discussing about your certificates, your batches and the resources, how you would be getting them. Apart from it, it is going to be very much entertaining to see the different projects made by the amazing educators who joined us in the complete bootcamp journey. So without a further delay, we can move ahead with our today's session. Although we have covered this learning management system related things so many times, but still we wanted to cover it again because still this is a very important part <clears throat> because from here only, you would be getting certificates, you would be getting batches and everything. So let me just show it to you. So here basically, you, you would be get, getting an access of the complete uh, LMS that is learning management system or your own dashboard on ai.thestempedia.com where you have to just 
sign in yourself by clicking on the sign in option and you have to once you have signed in with your credentials you have to click on my courses and click on the educator bootcamp level 2 to see all the learning content and the recorded videos once you are here you would be able to see all the learning content related to each and every sessions along with this there would be embedded videos which you can see it here a very important part that we want you to fill a daily feedback form after watching the sessions with uh, live or recorded that means even if you are not able to watch these sessions in uh, on live medium you can watch it later at as per your convenience fill the form as per your convenience and submit the activities to acquire and earn the wonderful batches and certificates for you so today of course we are going to cover two activities where we would be working with hand detection as well as we would be working with machine learning so now i think we are pretty clear on this part and i would now like to share my screen and move ahead with our today's part so still if you have not joined our uh, telegram channel please join us so that of course we can support you with your queries so now as we uh, like as we have already taken the session in the level one but of course i wanted to cover it again to give you a little more idea so that we can use this concept again today so now let's discuss about the machine learning so here you can see a small diagram which is giving us a four stage process for a human learning because it becomes very much important if we are talking about the machine learning that how exactly a human came with this concept of machine learning and to understand the history of course we have to understand how exactly the human learning process goes on so if you'll see it clearly basically we have four different stages the first is sense environment second is analyze the information third is decide and act and fourth is increase your knowledge so now starting with the first so we can consider it today as an example where we want to understand a machine learning process uh, we want to understand a human learning process with uh, uh, with a process i should say with an example like uh, if i last time we discussed about cat and dog that how exactly we learned about the cat and dog but today if i say that if you want to understand it through the postures so i'll just turn on my camera here to show the things up yeah so here you would be able to understand that of course from very childhood what happens is whenever any guest comes to our home or we go somewhere we see, we start observing the different gestures made by the humans like if i want to say hi or hello to everyone i'm going to just like uh, i would say i will just raise my hand and just uh, give a flow to my hand and say hi right so this happens with our childhood and we observe these things and we adopt these things right similarly if we want to stop anyone of course what we what do we do we bring our hand and put it like this that we want you to stop here also there are many other gestures like if you know about uh, if we, we generally do namaste right so we do namaste like this so any person doing this we are able to understand yeah that person is basically greeting us or uh, of course so similarly there are different gestures which we have learned from our childhood now after understanding how the gestures work what happened like now if you're going on a road and sometimes what happens like someone stops you or someone say waves his hand to say hi so you automat you at that time automatically understands that of course that person is greeting you and you wave your hand back but if i say if you are standing on a 
road okay and there are i can say the cars and the buses are going on okay on the road so you also wave hand like this right what does that mean so certainly that means that you want the bus to be stopped or car to be stopped so that you can abort that bus or a car so now what happens with the time we increase our knowledge understanding about the different gestures and as per the scenario we understand that what exactly that gesture means so the same gestures can also can be understood in a different way in a different scenario but as we are humans we are capable of understanding the things very well we are able to take the decisions perfectly now moving ahead to a part that how exactly we have understood all the uh, how exactly we have learned all of these things as a human so of course we have used our different uh, senses like vision touch smell taste and sound so here using these senses of course we can uh, we have given a data to ourselves to train ourselves on uh, on the different gestures on a different understanding to come up with a particular output or i should say with a particular decision whenever we require to do so now in this complete process if you'll see the first time when if you'll see a baby uh you uh, if you are going to just wave your hand you are not going to get a response from the uh, baby because of course for a baby uh, they don't have an understanding that the waving hand means hi so what exactly happens there is their parents or teachers tell them that see that person is waving his hand or her hand that is showcasing that he is greeting you okay so then in that case what happens even if you might have seen generally people also hold the baby's hand okay and like ask them to do so now what happens here is basically this is a training basically we are training the human babies to do a uh, waving of hand to say hi so this is how exactly the things work that we train then uh, of course the training comes up once there is an analysis of information by the machines uh by the humans then there is a decision and action taken upon it and finally we increase our knowledge that yeah of course uh, waving hand is only not the way of greeting there is different ways like saying hello or saying namaste or even some places we shake the hands so those also are a part of you can say the greeting so there at the end of course we got an understanding that greeting can be done in many ways now if someone is coming and uh, going to put forward his hand or her hand to you it's not like you would not understand what exactly the meaning of it you would understand that basically that is for shaking the hand okay so i think you might have got an idea how exactly the human learning work now let's understand the machine learning so as per the definition machine learning is the process of machines learning how to act themselves without any human intervention that means if just assume that there is a robot and i want it to work automatically so if in case i am going to wave my hand so my machine should also wave uh, its hand to give me a greeting or in case i am giving this expression from my hand or this that means i am asking the machine to come forward if i am just saying like this so i am asking my machine to go backward so these all decisions if taken by the machines automatically that means those machines have been gone under the machine learning process to take the decision now how exactly these machine gets an understanding so the first is of course we given input of images or sound information into the model that means we tell them first we give them a lot of images see this is the hand and if we are saying like this so that means go back if you are doing like this this is come back so we have to arrange the pictures in a data set so that we can give a input in different labels that this is hi this is namaste this is hello so that next time uh, if we are testing it we are able to get a desired output 
now these input are sent to the model for training now in model basically algorithm operates on the input to get the output uh, to get uh, to output the higher level information basically to find out the higher level information inside it that means if of course the person is static like this that does not mean that this is high okay but if we are waving it then only it is going to be said as high so this is a very granular information which is taken out by the algorithms okay of course the algorithm works on the pixels of the images and find that what exactly it is then the final things comes up as an output where basically we tested that whether whatever the training has been given to machine is machine performing good or not if machine is not performing good again i have to go back to the initial position uh, give little more data so that of course i can get an amazing output okay so now we are going to start with an activity so i hope you all are very ready with your picto blocks and i would just share my screen so now we are going to start with an activity where we are going to make my uh, make our quarky actually move with different hand gestures so i'll just share my screen now okay so i hope my screen is shared okay so the first thing and a very important part is of course that we should have a picto block we should have a quarky okay and a very important part that you should have signed into the picto block okay so if you have signed into the picto blocks then it means if you have signed into the picto blocks that means you are now able to use the different uh, extensions provided in the picto block so today we are going to start working with first the hand detection okay then we are going to move ahead with machine learning so i'll just click on this add extension option at the bottom corner so i hope you are all able to locate this add extension option so now what i want is i'll just click on this and i'll add an extension which is human body detection okay so as we know that this extension is can be worked uh, with offline uh, picto blocks that is you do not require uh, of course the internet to use it so you would require a little patience so that of course all the model details are loaded in the picto blocks and can be used for making a wonderful project so now i have added an extension called as human body pose detection and now here the first and important part is i have to bring up a block which is going to help me with the input data right because till the time i'm not giving an input my machine is not going to work since i have to take an input i have to turn on the camera also i have to use the block which says when green flag is clicked and now here if you see i'm going to add a block from settings that is show detection so here if you we'll observe this complete extension blocks that it has been basically categorized into three different part one is settings one is pose detection and the third is hand detection so if i'm talking about setting is basically i have to set an environment so that of course i can use the utilities present in other blocks of this extension now since i have already added to turn on the camera i have also added to show the detection now the next part is i want everything to be working on live basis that means on an instant like if there is any change on the footage i want to see the changes on live so i'll just click it here i'll click it here on forever and now as i said i want to mention this to my machine that i want my machine to analyze something 
of course machine can analyze machine can come up with the solution but the most important part with the machine is you have to give a command so that they can initiate their process so to initiate the process i have a block which says analyze the image from the hand now they have initiated the process but how exactly i'm going to check whether the process is working good or whether i'm going to get some output or not so what i can do here is i'm going to add a condition i'm going to go to control and i have a block says if then else so basically this is a block I, we have already discussed it but again i would like to draw your attention here that this block is basically we are using many times whenever we want to work with condition since condition is a very important part in the machines because there can be many possibilities and while making a project it's very necessary that we consider all the possibilities so even there can be a negative possibility or a positive so we have to consider both of them and also allocate an output related to both of them so right now i'm going to add a block here which says is hand detected so this can be true or this can even be false so this is why i'm using a condition that if this condition is true that my machine has detected some hand so in that case what i want is i want my machine to do something okay so let's say i'll add from looks say hello okay oh sorry okay if in case it does not detects any of the hand i want no hand okay so now let's keep this inside the forever and let's see what happens so i'll need to just change my camera just a moment okay so now i'll just click here so right now you can see it's saying no hand detected because yes there is no hand right now right on the screen but if in case i bring my hand what is going to happen i'll just stop this okay just give me a second so right now you can see it saying no hand detected okay but as soon as i bring my hand it is going to say hello so you can see it saying no hand detected no hand detected and as soon as i'm bringing my hand it is saying that say hello so now of course we did this part but the problem okay let me just uh, clear the screen first so i'll just hide the detection Okay, and then bring show here. Okay. So, okay. So now you can see what we did till now was we detected the hand, and I was just asking it to say something. But now, if I want to work with Quarky, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring my Quarky into play. Just give me a second. So I'll turn on my quarky. I'll just switch the camera so that, of course, it is visible to you. So I hope my quarky is now visible to everyone. So although I would just showcase this thing to you, uh, even uh, once I have like uh, completed it. Okay. So first, I need to select a board. Okay. So I'll just select a board here. that is corky i'll click on connect and i'll just connect my corky with bluetooth
Okay, once I have done this, now the next part is I have to use certain blocks. So for as of now, I'll just remove these blocks because I want certain different things to happen. So generally, as I said, if we are talking about hand gesture, we do this part when we want to stop something. So why not to bring a robot part and bring a stop robot if in, if in case a hand is detected. Also, if you want to make it little more interactive, I can add a display part, okay, which where I would be making everything, okay, just a second, where I would be filling up red light. So now what will happen if hand is detected, of course, the display matrix would be this and the quark is going to stop. Else what is going to happen? Else I want, if there is no hand, I want my quarky to keep going on. Okay, so, and also, so I'll just put it here, go forward. And of course, 100% speed is going to be very much for my small board, so I can try 30%, okay? Although I don't know, like it is still going to be very, very high. Okay, but still let's try it. So now if I'm going to press a green flag, you can see it's moving, right? As soon as I put my hand, you can see it stop. As soon as I kept my hand. So right now you can see how exactly it is working. Okay, so it's moving. So it's it has detected the hand on the last part. So now it is done. And I want it to stop, so I'll just put my hand. So now you can see how exactly it is able to basically detect the hand and move. So let me just show this part on stopping the share. So right now, I will just bring this, keep it here, okay? And I'll just put it, leave it. And now as soon as I bring my hand, it's getting stopped. Okay, so camera in camera, your hand should not be visible, okay? I'll remove my hand and it will again move. Again, I'll bring my hand, it is going to stop. So using basically hand gestures, I'm able to stop my vehicle. So it is going out of, so I'll just bring it here. Okay, and now I'll just stop this. Okay, so now I hope you might have got an idea that how exactly basically using my hand, I'm able to stop this. Okay, I'm able to stop all the, uh, this part of Corky. Now, but of course, if we are talking about the activities, uh, right, of course, if you're talking about some technology where we want not only to stop it, okay, we want it to work with different gestures. Like if in case, of course, if I'm putting my hand in even different gestures, the quark is only going to detect a hand. Whether you are putting your hand with an open palm, you are putting your hand with a single finger, or you are putting uh, your hand with, uh, with like uh, fist closed. All the things is the hand. So whenever it is going to detect a hand, it is going to stop itself. But if in case I want, so I'll just bring the new file first. Uh, of the Pictoblogs is downloading a data since 10 minutes. So I would request uh, Juman ma'am, please restart the Pictoblogs and please check. Hope the uh, RAM is not getting overused because if there are other applications working on background, then sometimes it makes little difficult for Pictoblogs to get open. So please, uh, from the task manager, please uh, switch off all the other tasks which are uh, not required at the moment and then restart the picto block. Okay, so now I'll just bring up a new project here. Let me just... So I have like right now turn, let me just turn my copy off. So I'll just share my screen now. Okay, 
So now you would be able to see that we are going to talk about now about the teachable machine. And why we are talking about teachable machine is as we know, uh, like uh, it's an amazing platform where we can just train our own models to get the outputs, right? Okay, so I'll just uh, move here. Okay, yeah. So basically, what are the different types of model models you can work on Teachable Machine? So you can work with image model. Okay, you can also work with uh, the pose model. You can also work with an audio, but right now audio is not something which is going very good. So we generally prefer doing it with, I should say this, uh, the image model, okay? Image model is something where we can work it very well. So what we are going to do, I'm just bringing my picto blocks back again, okay? So we are going to use the Teachable Machine Platform. But for here, this is very important that we have to understand that we can add a machine learning extension here using an add extension, but we have to move to the teachable machine to create a model. So once you click it here on the machine learning extension, okay, you would observe here that there are no blocks added. I think you would, you are able to see there are no blocks added, but there is actually are uh, two different clickable buttons are here, like create a model and load a model. So what am I going to do it here is, I'll start with creating a model, okay? So to create a model, of course, once I click it here, so it is going to open. So once you have clicked on create a model, it is going to take you to the part of a teachable machine where we are going to train our model. Now we can use, of course, the post project and you can also try that. But of course, right now, what we are going to do is we are going to use the image project so that we can work with it very easily. Okay. So now here you can see it's a class one and a class two options. Okay. Okay, thanks, uh, like wonderful. It's amazing to see the comments, okay? Uh, so now here, I'm going, I have to make a, my gesture control robot. So if I say that I have to make my robot move in different direct, directions, right? So one can be left, one can be right, and I can also train my model on stopping it and going forward, right? So we can take these four classes and what are classes? So basically classes are nothing but the different labels of the data. So if we are saying that this is a Go class, that means we have to give the images only related to Go class. So right now I'll make a class that is Go. I'll make one more class, right? Okay, and here from here, basically you can add more classes. I'll make it left. Okay, and I'll add one more class that is a stop. Okay, no, oh, sorry, stop. Now I have added four classes. Now I have to also give the images. So of course, last time we worked with one of a cat dog classifier where we basically uploaded the data. But today we are going to use a web camera. So I'll just click on web camera and you would be able to switch on your web camera. Okay, and here what you have to do, it is little uh, tricky that what you have to do is you have to keep the background clear. Okay, so once you'll be keeping the background clear, then only you would be able to get a good result. So I'll try my level best to do so. Just give me a second. So I'll...
So I'm just turning my laptop so that, of course, I can get a clear background. Okay, so I hope this is going to work. So this is pretty clear. Okay, so this is how exactly we are going to use the model. So of course, I have to be little like this. Okay, so what we are going to do is, of course, for Go, we have to train it certain gestures. So right now, what we can do, we can take this as going right. We can take this as going left. We can take this as a stop. Okay, and we can use this as a go. So there are four things and we have, we are going to use four of them. Okay. Just give me a second. Okay. So now it would be a little more easier for me. Just give me a couple of seconds. Yeah. So now I would be able to train it perfectly. So now how I have to train. So you have to see this very carefully that there is an option to saying hold to record okay so as soon as i'm going to click on this it is going to start recording the photos so what i'm going to do i want whenever i show this that is a sign of victory so i want my uh machine to go forward so i'll just give the images i'll just try to take the images little in a different way so that it is much more comfortable and how many images we have to give you have to take a record that you have to give images around 150 to 200, not more than that. Otherwise, it is going to consume a lot of RAM. Now for right, of course, I have to show uh, this angle. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my hand just a sec. Actually, for me, uh, I have tilted my laptop on the left hand side, so it's getting a little bit difficult, but not a problem. We'll try our level best to do so. Okay, so I think this is going to work. Yeah, this is going to work. So for right, we are going to train it with this. Oh, I'm sorry. So by mistake, I added the data here, so I'll just delete this. So we cannot put two different data in when label, that is one class. So now here I'll click web camera and I'll now give the... Okay, again, I'll give somewhere 180 images. Okay. Okay. Now what I have to do here is, I have to add for left and for left it's pretty easy. So now I'll click on left. Okay, so I have given more than 200, but I'll delete some of them since like I don't want my machine to get lagged because if we are giving these images, it of course going to use it and it is going to of course take the ram so i would delete some images so i'll try to keep it around 180 only okay now coming to the stop so stop is very simple i want this we can feast it so we can use this as a stop okay so i'll directly choose web camera and i'll put this to hold to record And you have to also make sure right now I'm using only my one hand. Okay. But if in case you are, you want to use both the hand. So you, is it okay for each five images? Not, of course not because see, I'll tell you why is it not okay. When we were working with cat and dog, they of course had a very large difference in their images, right? But when we are talking about human hand, so of course there is not a big difference in these images if you'll 
look to it closely so that is why we cannot give uh, very less images we have to give minimum 150 to 200 images in order to get a good result okay so i hope this is now perfect okay yeah so now uh, coming back to the part i'll just stop the video again here so i have given the images with different angles so to basically train the model now i'm going to click here on train the model so as soon as i click on train the model you have to understand what is going to happen so the first important thing is going to happen is the machine is going to find the similarities between all the images in each class so here if you see this message that is page is unresponsive that means it is taking a little ram so you have to click wait okay because there are two chromes two cameras so many things running on my pc so uh, sometimes the pc cannot handle but you have to press wait only always now an important point which i want to drag your attention that it is going to of course find the similarities oh i've chosen the actually wrong color let me just bring red one here they will clo or closely observe this part so are you able to see a number growing that is 10 out of 50 11 out of 50 12 out of 50 so what exactly this number is basically this is we are calling it as epoch that is the number of time the machine is training itself because in a single training of course we cannot get the wonderful result so it is going to train itself now every time there is a training going on you will observe there would be some calculations on back end where first the similarities between the same classes would be found then the difference between the other classes uh, images would be found so that of course machine can understand what is the difference between the images given as an input data and what is the similarities between the classes that is like all the go class would only have two fingers if all the right hand images if you'll see the thumb would be somewhere at the downside so these type of calculations happen now once the calculation is done you would be able to see here uh, i should say the testing part so now right now it is getting very confused okay so again i would require to do the same setup so just give me a second okay so right now i'll do the same okay right now it is not able to find any answer but let's see whether it's able to see my hand and find yes this is a stop it has trained itself correct it is left perfectly correct it is you can see i will I'm trying to show so it is detecting it right now the there is a percentage also i'll tell you what exactly that percentage means so here you can see this is go while i'm not able to like show my hand completely but still i'll try so right now you can see while i'm giving a right hand it is basically not so sure that this is a right side turn or not so what it is giving if it is giving me a percentage that whether how much percentage my machine is confident okay so right now if i'll show this it's understanding it left okay if i'll show this uh, this it's understanding because now you have to understand that i have trained my machine with a certain background while right now i'm changing the background if i'm changing the hand so my machine is not going to work good so you have to make sure that you are working with the same background if you want to work with different background then you have to train the machine as well with the same backgrounds okay i hope this part is pretty clear so now we have also tested it and now i'm going to just clear all the drawings and the next part is we would be exporting the model so i'll just click on export model and here basically i have to click on upload my model so i saw this was one of the teachers doubt that uh, it is showing something else so no this is going to be upload model always once it is uploaded it is going to show you that the model is 
completely uploaded or up to date. So I'll just click it here. If in case that might be a case when you are seeing something else, that means you have clicked on the model link. So you don't have to click on the model link. You have to basically copy that model link and you have to copy and uh, basically paste that model link over the picto blocks. Okay, that's superb. I can see Herschel Shimpi has mentioned it's working, that's superb. So now you can see I've got this model link, okay? I hope you all are able to see this. Let me just again uh, mark this. So basically what I've got is this model link I have got, okay? And now I have to copy it from here so that of course I can take it to, I can take it to my picto blocks. So here you can see it is saying my cloud model is up to date. Okay. And now I'll just clear the drawing. I'll copy this. And I have to take this to the picto block. So I'll just close the teachable machine right now. Okay. And open the picto blocks. Now here, an uh, important part that I have to do is I have to click on load a model. That is second option. Paste the model. Okay, and then click on load model. So it will take a little bit of time. You have to be patient with it because patience with it because uh, you can understand we have of course used so many images. We have trained our model in so many images. Right now, it has uploaded everything. Okay, now if you'll observe that this block, okay, let me just zoom it and show you that this block has all the four classes what we had, okay? That means our complete information has been successfully transferred here, okay? So now the next part comes up that how exactly I'm going to make my core key work with this, how exactly I'm going to use the script. So as you know, the first and a very important part, whenever we are working with artificial intelligence, becomes that I have to take an input data. So I'll just zoom it out actually, yeah. So it this block is somewhere going to help me to turn on the camera. Once the camera is turned on, of course, I have to also check, right, whether it is working good or not. So this time what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to get, uh, a, a for like for an ease, what I'm going to do is, I'm also going to bring a recognition window. So you'll observe a small change that there would be a small recognition window coming up on top so that there is no so problem of basically the stage. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm also going to add a block which says when green flag is clicked. Now these three blocks are going to only help me to set the settings part. Now the testing part has to be taken care under the forever as we would be working with the things in a real time. And now the, uh, the things come up related to the condition because we have four different conditions here, right? That it can go, it can stop, it can take right or it can take left. So now I would be using a condition and I already have this block with me is identified class let me zoom it out a little bit or let me just use this option here. So if we'll observe here this, that is identified class from the web camera in Go is Go, okay? Kya wo go hai? So basically what exactly going to happen is, I'm going to bring that I want at this part that my Corky should move ahead. But how I'm going to get the Corky palettes? So here I have to select the board. So there was again a question that I'm not able to see the Quarky palette. So that is very important that you select the Quarky as board. You have to click on board, you have to select the Quarky, and then only you would be able to find this. Now what I'm going to do it here is I'm going to bring a robot, okay? And I'm going to click it here, go forward at 100% speed, okay? But of course, as we have already seen, that 100% speed would going to work a very high. So right now I'm making it 30 so that it is very understandable by us and we can easily change our uh, actions. 
And to make it more beautiful, let's bring some color of green. Okay. Now else. Now here you have to understand, right now we use if this is one condition. Now in the else part, you have to use one more if else only, not if. You have to again use this block because there are four different conditions, okay? So we would be putting one condition inside the other. So right now I'm going to put like this and now I'm going to check it for the second. So if the identified class from the web camera, now we have tested go, let's keep it stop, okay? And now if it is a stop, what do I want is, or let's keep it left, Okay, and now I would be, I would try to have some uh, motion on my core key for that I have to go to robot. And I want, I want is, I want my core key to move on the left side. So from the drop down, I'll select this. And again, to make it little slow, I'll make it 30. Okay. The next is to bring a little good look of quarky let's put some color on it so i'll put this mustard color okay now again model is still loading in picto blocks okay so just what you can do is you can just stop the process and you can just click back again on load a model and repaste the link also please check that you have copied the link correctly that is very important because sometimes a part of the link or a one even character is left to be copied. So it becomes little difficult for machine to understand. Okay, now again, let's make a ladder of if else here. Okay, so I'll just bring if else. Okay, and now we are going to put the next is the right. So I'll just bring that block and I'll put it here that if it is right. So what do I want is again, the same block. So I'll just go to robot and I'll just drop this down here. And from the drop down, I'm going to select right. And again, uh, with the little speed, like 30%. And to make it little beautiful, let's add some colors to the quarky. So I'll just click it here and I will fill it with blue. Okay, oh, sorry. So how exactly I'm filling the color is I'm opening this matrix, I'm selecting a color and there is an option to click here that says fill. Okay, that is going to fill the complete uh, matrix. Now the last is if else. So do we have any more conditions? Of course not. So in that particular scenario, what we can use is we can directly use if we do not require if else now, because there is only one condition left. So what am I going to do it here is the next again, I'm going to check. And I, right now I'm going to check it with stop. Okay, and if I'm bringing a stop, of course I can uh, bring a color of red. Generally stop signifies that. And then along with it, I want stop rope. Okay, so if I just zoom my screen, uh, zoom out my screen, you would be able to see all the four conditions, go left, right and stop. Okay, and that has been even mentioned with a particular color, like green, mustard, blue and red. Now the things come up that how exactly I'm going to start. So I would, what I'm going to do it here is, I'll just trying to set my camera here. So I'll go to settings, audio video settings. And I'm just going to change this. Okay. Also, along with this, I want to uh, I'm, uh, I want to show you the quirky working. So I turn on my camera and let me just put my camera a little down. I hope it is good now. Just 
Yeah, it seems good now. Okay, so let me just put my core key here. Okay, my this is also ready. So now what I want to do is I want to connect. So for that, I have to turn on the core key. As soon as I turn on the core key, I can see a light blue color. And now I'll click on connect. I'll go to Bluetooth port. I'll see Quarky EDD6. That's the name of my own Quarky. I'll click on connect. And as soon as it gets connected, you can see the green, the blue light has turned out to be green. Now, if I, as soon as I place this green flag, so you can see this recognition window coming up. So I was talking about this, okay? So what I want here is I'm going to, just a moment. So you can see if even I'm not showing it, okay? So it is going to do something. So let me just bring stop. So you can see it got stopped. You can see with the left, it is taking the left direction. Go forward, stop. Okay, then of course we can make it. So right now I haven't trained it on back. Of course, even we can train it to go back. Let's make directly a left turn here. Okay, I'll just stop it. And if in case, let's try right. So it is trying to take right. As soon as I put a stop, it is going to stop. For right, it's taking a little bit of problem, but of course, because my hand is not sufficiently visible. Okay, right now it is able to find, let's stop it. So I hope you have got an idea that how exactly I'm able to control my robot with gestures, right? And I think that's pretty cool, right? That we are able to make my robot move with the hand gestures. Now, how exactly I did, I think it is very pretty clear to everyone, but I would again like to show you and demonstrate you this uh, with not sharing my screen, okay? And I hope this is clearly visible. Blue light is showing, but forward not moving. So there is a high chance that you have kept this. Okay, blue light is not for right now if you have coded it in my way. So blue light, I have kept it for right hand side. If you have kept it for forward, you have to make sure that you first make the forward movement and then bring the display light. That is going to really work good. Okay, so let's see this again once by, I should say, seeing on a big screen. Okay, so I'll try this uh, connecting. So for that, again, I need to turn on the core key. Once I've turned on the core key, I'll just click on try again to check my Bluetooth. And here I go connecting the port key. And let's start making my port key move in different directions. So let me just start it from here. And let me start it with go. So you can see it is coming as go. Let me just stop it by showing my stop finger. And now let me just make it go left direction. And let's try a right direction and stop it. And then a small right and stop it. Let's make it go forward, stop it, take a left turn. And go back to the initial position. So I'm trying to take it to an initial position. And I hope you might have got a fair idea how exactly it's working. So even what you can do here is 
you can right now i'll just share my screen and i'll tell you a very important thing that if i am not showing anything right so it is still going forward and it is still detecting go so instead of that what you can do is you can even train the machine with a blank okay like a blank background that if there is nothing then i want my quarky to be stopped at a place okay and then in that way machine is going to respond to you even for your blank background that if in case you are not showing anything still if it's not moving uh, then just first check whether your quarky is able to move with only uh, go forward direction that i mean to say is just connect your quarky and check it with a block which says go forward with 100% speed okay stop and left is too similar so you can choose any of the colors is not a problem so of course i can change this color to green yellow even white is a good color i think you if you have not seen how exactly white looks actually for i like the white color on quarky a pretty good so let me just show it to you by connecting it okay if you are finding any problem with movement you have to make first check that whether it's stand alone it's moving or not that means uh, is it able to move just with a single or not so you can see this is a white bright light coming out of a quarky okay so even you can set uh, i can say the brightness to it and clear the screen and many more things as per your instruction so i hope this is pretty clear and you might have definitely got an understanding how we can move ahead with the gesture control robots so i'll stop my share here for a moment now a uh, important part here i would like to tell is i can just share this model link okay so that it can be used by everyone even if you are using it phone so how exactly you would be working on phone is of course you cannot uh, create the model but of course you can use our model right so let me just paste this so tina i'm just pasting this for you on chat Sure, Aish. So this is the link which you would be shortly getting on your chats. Okay. so now the things come up that if in case you are working on phone so in that scenario you have to directly copy this link okay and once you have copied this link you have to paste it on the load model option and then you have to load it okay simple go forward is not working how to start so i'll tell you so what you can do is you can just first check that everything is working fine so for that let me just try to show you a troubleshooting Okay, so I'll just share my screen. 
So what I want, if in case it's uh, not working for you, don't worry. The initial step is connect your Quarky with uh, the servo. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not servo, serial port basically. Okay, Bluetooth connected, fine, okay. You can add, uh, let me first answer the first question that if your motor is not working, you have to connect your Quarky with the serial port that is USB C type cable. Once you have connected with a USB C type cable, then I want you to please click on upload firmware option. Let me just show it to you. So you would get an upload firmware option here just above the stage part, okay? And you can do this only on your laptop desktop. So you have to upload the firmware, okay? Connect it with USB C type cable and upload the firmware and again test it. If still you are facing any problem related to the motor motion, you can join our doubt session. Of course, we are going to help you and support you there. The second question is how can we add more classes? So right now you won't be able to add more classes to the same model because that training has been completed and stored in teachable machine. So if in case you want uh, more classes, okay? So you have to train the model from beginning in the teachable machine, okay? So this is a way out you can do. And of course, I think the things are pretty clear. Still, let me just share my screen. So we used this machine learning extension using which we created the model. And we have even gave, shared you the model links. By clicking on load model, you have to paste the link. And this is very important, the educators who are using the smartphone, okay? Okay, now here you can uh, copy and paste the model link which is shared. Now talking about some applications, so yeah, machine learning is getting very much used in object and animal classifiers. It is getting used in identifying the different shapes and the gestures. So we'll answer that whether the people are wearing masks or not. Also in the healthcare industries where it is getting, uh, helping the doctors to detect the different diseases, okay? Making the games, just we did one of it, like making a rock, paper, scissor game. So today, but we did it a little different. And I hope this is very clear and uh, to everyone. Now, if you are still have not joined our Telegram group, please join our Telegram group so that of course we can help you, support you in that. And also please do not forget to fill up the feedback forms, uh, especially for all the educators in India. You have to use the first QR code, okay? And for the educators who have joined us, especially through the community of Niti Ayo, please fill out the second form you can just scan the QR code from here and also you can uh, directly fill up this feedback form in your dashboard. Those educators are finding a difficulty. Of course, we are looking to the difficulties and uh, for other educators who have already shared us, our technical team is working on it. And definitely I can assure you that we are going to support you with the issue till the time it is not getting resolved. So you have to only keep a patience with us. Definitely all the issues will be getting resolved, whatever it is, whether it's a technical, whether it's related to robot, it's related to your PC. Still, if you are, want to have a word with our direct educators, please join us on the doubt sessions at 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. Uh, and then of course we can support you on that. So that was basically all uh, which I wanted to cover and I hope uh, you have understood correctly. There was a small question that how exactly we can add the classes. So let me directly open the teachable machine and show it to you. You can add the classes in the teachable machine by clicking and add class option. I think this was even answered by uh, Pat Scott. Thanks uh, Pat for answering this. So you can just click on add classes option here. Okay, so this is an add class option. This is basically going to help you to add more classes. 
I would recommend you not to go more than seven or eight classes with at least 180 or uh, 150 to 200 images in each. Uh, otherwise, it can become little difficult for your machine to handle those things. So I hope these things are pretty clear. Still, you have anything, you can, of course, let us know. We are going to support you with that. And that was basically all from my end. So yeah, thank you for joining us on the day number five. We would be coming up with a closing ceremony where we would be talking about the, uh, I should say, the certification batches. And of course, how can you become an AI ambassador and of course implement these robotics and AI concepts for your own students. So do not forget to join us live in coming class, which is going to happen from on the 3rd of July. So I hope you have all enjoyed the today's session. Definitely you have got a good understanding of the things. Uh, so that was all from my end. Uh, thank you everyone. Thanks for joining in. Okay, let me just take one question. How can we get the model link once we have already trained after closing the window? So after closing the window, if you haven't taken the model link, you have to retrain it basically because once you have closed the window, uh, the complete uh, things have lost. So still, if you want to take, you can take our model link and work on it. But yeah, there can be little difficulty because the background I'm using and you are going to use would be little changed, right? Okay, so thank you and over to you, Tina. Thank you, Ayush. It's really amazing to see Ayush with a single AI powered quality kit. We can make so many real time projects like uh, self driving car, line follower, guest control robot, and so on. We all are super excited to make our own guest control robot using uh, Quarky and Picture Block. Hope all our educators enjoyed today's session. Thank you, all our dear educators, for joining today. See you all on Sunday. Bye bye.